adopted, abused, and abandoned. Seven kids placed in the care of Michelle Hobson, who became known as YouTube Mom after her 2019 arrest. The horrors Hobson was accused of shocking not only our state, but the country. And now ABC 15 Zach Crenshaw has uncovered the state was told repeatedly about the abuse and neglect years before her arrest. For nearly a decade, at least seven kids, the Arizona Department of Child Safety was charged with protecting, said they were starved, beaten, burned, pepper sprayed and pulled from school. We didn't get a single record from DCS, but we got enough from Maricopa police reports going over hundreds of pages and photos, as well as hours of body camera footage that reveal DCS failed to remove the kids despite nearly a dozen detailed reports. Now we want some answers for you, the public that funds DCS, for the thousands of other kids still in their care, but most of all, for those seven children who spent years wondering, will help ever come? Doesn't let us do anything at all. She doesn't even let us go play outside. But on a rare trip to the dentist to fix rotting teeth, one of Michelle Hobson's adopted kids confided in an older biological daughter about the alleged abuse behind locked doors. She starved me for five days straight. I threw up one day because of it. She didn't care. She still did not feed me. The seven kids, ranging from two years old to 13, told police they were routinely beaten. She used her phone to pound on my head. His stomach is literally covered in bruises. She spits in people's faces. The kids told police Michelle took pleasure in burning them with a lighter, freezing them in ice baths, and even using pepper spray. She makes us sit with the pepper spray on us for a whole entire day straight. She emptied two bottles on me. Those canisters eventually found in the mess of the home next to diapers. If we pee ourselves, she doesn't let us have water for at least a whole entire day straight. This is as bad of a case without any fatality as I can remember ever reviewing. Pinal County Attorney Kent Folkmer. I mean, there was uh, violence perpetuated on, on the genitals of small children. They were locked in a room. They were deprived of food. Uh, and it was all done if they didn't perform these little skits and these little videos. Those little videos were viewed hundreds of millions of times on Michelle's lucrative YouTube channel, Fantastic Adventures. She was making, I think the last few months, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. The videos were filmed and edited by Michelle's older biological sons. The family even had a green room for special effects and Hobson's torture. She makes us sleep in a green closet. How many other people sleep in there? Three. Three other kids that sleep only in pull-ups. And she has a lock on it, so we can't get out to have to pee. We go to bed. And the next day, the next morning, she won't let us out. Like, we asked her, and she says no. If she was in a bad mood, Michelle would reportedly remove the light bulbs. And the kids, they'd be locked in the dark, starving in dirty diapers for days. When trauma happens to a child, it's, it's severe and it's long-lasting. Robert Pastor is a Valley attorney who specializes in abuse. Because of what I do, uh, some of the cases I've handled, I'm not surprised. One room in the house was immaculate likely for filming. The rest, filthy. While YouTube viewers were oblivious to the horrors off camera, Arizona's Department of Child Safety was not. It was a collective failure of the system. While their goal is to protect children, um, they seem to fail in that effort too frequently. And Zach's investigation not done yet. When we come back, how DCS failed to save the children despite being told about the abuse more than 10 times. Plus, why two Maricopa police officers were disciplined in connection with all of this. Just moments ago, we told you about the horrors behind closed doors surrounding the so-called so -called YouTube mom. Millions of viewers and neighbors had no idea it was happening, but DCS did know. Here's Zach Crenshaw with more of his investigation. Not only did DCS fail to catch the abuse during their monthly visits when Michelle was fostering 14 kids over a decade, some until 2019, but the state agency was alerted over and over about visible signs of neglect and abuse. In this police investigation, detectives detailed the 11 times between 2011 and 2019 that teachers, siblings, even the kids themselves told DCS they needed help. 11 times the kids were left with Michelle.
The first documented April 2011. A babysitter told DCS the kids yell and cry after Michelle will lock them in a bedroom. DCS found the details unsubstantiated. Two years later, May 2013, one child told her teacher, Michelle makes her stand in the corner when she gets home from school until she has to beg. Finding unsubstantiated. A week later, another report from the school outlining three years of general neglect. The adopted daughter with mild intellectual defects told her inquiring teacher, Michelle took her toothbrush, which is why there was gunk all over her teeth and gums. The teacher told the agency Michelle was rarely involved, but had a fear of harm and retaliation due to the report. That fear realized three days later, when after a CPS visit to the home, Michelle contacted the school and withdrew the girl. Records reveal Michelle gloated to the teacher, saying, quote, the caseworker laughed at the allegation and did not take it seriously. Findings unsubstantiated. Do you go to school? Nope. I'm homeschooled, but I don't even do school homework at home or anything. Back to the DCS reports. And a year later, August 2014, a Gilbert daycare tells DCS Michelle's foster kids are unbathed, covered in feces, and have infected blisters and rashes all over. Despite all the details, the findings, once again, unsubstantiated. Nine months later, April 2015, a foster child says that two years ago, Michelle, quote, threw a can of food at her head and it left a scar. Was the scar ever looked at? We don't know, but the findings, you guessed it, unsubstantiated. Three months later, July 2015, DCS is told that one of Michelle's girls has serious bruising, a horrible rash, and another daughter appears to be starving. Again, nothing was done unsubstantiated. The most egregious failure, though, happened December 2017. A boy ran from Michelle's Maricopa house naked to avoid another beating. Michelle took a risk and called 911. Officers found the child shivering in a backyard. He begged them not to take him home, saying, I'm being starved and pepper sprayed. Officer Michael Takagi documented the kids' disclosures, writing, quote, she keeps them out of school so officials don't see bruises or hits them in areas that are not visible. Then he called DCS. Six days later, a DCS worker finally did a welfare check. Reports show she was told ahead of time, quote, mother is reported to know CPS and will brief the children and tell them she will hurt them if they say anything. How, after all of those details, Michelle managed to keep the kids is a mystery. But her older biological daughters told officers this in 2019. Every time it happens, they give her a heads up. Okay. They tell her what's happening. Because she's a part of the foster care system. They interviewed the kids right in front of her, yeah. right in front of my mother. DCS yet again found that abuse unsubstantiated. And they refuse to give us any records even after Hobson died due to health issues in late 2019. They want to keep this information under wraps. In hindsight, uh, there was some mistakes. Maricopa PD also failed on multiple accounts. Officer Takagi never recategorized the juvenile problem to criminal abuse. So detectives were never flagged to investigate. His lieutenant, Mary Turner, also failed to review the report and catch his mistake. Two years later, a supervisor would write, the children were subject to more abuse because of their failures. In fact, Michelle retaliated. The kids told detectives in 2019 that after that runaway incident, mom got mad. She put us in that room for a really long time. I think it lasted more than a day. So we got scared to tell again because that was after the cops came once. For all their mistakes, Lieutenant Turner and Officer Takagi were suspended without pay for 10 hours a single shift. Does that seem like appropriate punishment to you, given how many more months the kids suffered? Unfortunately, when 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 we make mistakes, as police, the stakes are high. Uh, you know, when we can't make that hurt go away. We have to own that and move on. They shirked their responsibility. And sadly, these children had to live in this sort of torturous environment for far too long. I spanked the child. Like, what? No crime in the No. It's important to acknowledge the kids told police Hobson was a manipulator. Ms. Hobson specifically chose children that has had significant mental health issues, 
knowing full well that those with significant mental health issues are going to be less believable. You're not telling me what was said. No, I'm not going to tell you because there's an investigation. Michelle would show DCS investigators the stocked fridge and packed pantry, but the kids say they were being starved, still fearful to eat even after officers arrived in 2019. We're going to protect you. Is there anything in here that you want to eat right now while we're waiting? Seriously, anything. Look, you got some chips. She's gonna see me in no, she's not. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> you are not going to talk to mom right now. The children also said Michelle forced them to lie. Last time CPS and cops came, I wanted to tell them the truth, but they wouldn't let my mom told me to say all lies. And if I didn't say lies, she would have she threatened me and said she was going to kill me. Even with those lies, though, Pastor says DCS should have gotten to the truth. The idea that, oh, children lied and therefore we couldn't have known, well, that's contrary to everything that they're trained to do, which is to look at the totality of the circumstances and you begin to put it together and you say, hey, there's something going on here. We need to look more closely. But a closer look never happened. As a result, we had a number of young children that suffered potentially irreparable harm. It's harm that will last a lifetime. The court said this is a person that you can trust, and they were violated so horribly. Many I've spoken with say Arizona's Department of Child Safety needs massive changes to better protect kids. Because there weren't adequate resources, they cut corners or they made judgment calls, and as a result, these children got harmed. We probably report to DCS, I would say, at least five times a day and then you magnify that across the state. The Arizona legislature, year in and year out, has not given these caseworkers the resources, the training, the payment and salary they need to make sure children are safe. DCS denied all of my records requests, citing confidentiality, even though Hobson is dead and the children are anonymous. We deserve to know why are so many children in the DCS system being hurt. DCS Director Mike Faust also declined our multiple requests for an interview. You can't have accountability unless you have transparency. And DCS is an organization that we know one thing, they do not like this type of information finding its way into the public domain. Do you think any of the kids should live there? No, I think they're not safe there. The older sister called this cell phone video a quote, last ditch effort to save her siblings. I, just, I want to get them out of there. Mm -hmm. And I don't want CBS to play their games. Anymore. I want all my other sisters and brothers to be in a safe home. I love you and I don't even know you. <laughs> I love you too because you're saving me from this house. I know, baby. But the larger question remains. Will we ever know how DCS handled this internally? I hope so. Um, I sincerely hope so because it's not just these kids, it's all the other kids who are still in DCS care. It's been two years now since Hobson was arrested. Two years for DCS to reflect on all of those unsubstantiated reports. Those missed opportunities to save the children sooner. Not only did the agency deny all of our interview and public records requests, they declined to answer if any changes have been made or any employees held accountable. You can read their full statement as well as more exclusive details on our website. Zach Crenshaw, ABC 15, Arizona. Even though DCS would not comment on this story, we plan to ask the governor and lawmakers what they make of the state agency repeatedly failing to remove the kids. We'll have much more on this story in the coming weeks.